Hello, welcome to our 7th through 12th grade Sunday school class. Happy you're here. Happy you're joining me outside this time. I have obtained a selfie stick by accident and I'm going to use it throughout the video. It's really enhancing, enhancing our, uh, our video capabilities here and I'm loving playing with it. I'm happy you're here. I'm happy you're taking what's going to be 10 or 15 minutes of your time to discern God around you, to hear and to see, and for this lesson, maybe even to taste all the different ways that God is right here and here and here and here and here and here and here, seeking us out, hoping to interact with us and, and join us, join us today. As always, I want to start out with highs and lows. It's hard to do far away, but I want to keep going with it. Um, what's the best part of your day and what's the worst part of your day? If you're with someone, please go up to them and ask them, what was the best part of their day? What was the worst part of their day? Or the best part of their week? You can extend it out. You know, highs and lows are really important. First, it's tradition. We want to keep going with it. It's also important because we are incredibly complex people. We feel a lot of things. We do a lot of things. We say a lot of things and we just don't always get the chance for people to to really listen and really hear what we're saying and we certainly don't get the chance to listen to others so please as always with these Sunday school lessons take a moment find someone text them call them anything ask them how they're doing check in with each other my high is most certainly this selfie stick um, it's a real improvement I'm really enjoying it um, my low is it is currently raining and I was really, really enjoying the sunshine, but probably didn't need the rain to come, maybe wash away, wash away some of the pollen. I can feel myself getting all stuffed up with everything in the air. Check in with each other, please. So important, especially now, check in with each other. Once you've checked in, come back. We're gonna open ourselves um, with a bit of prayer, a bit of breathing as we always do. And also a little, a little comment by Mr. Rogers on this occasion. Just before we get into the prayer, remember that part of the reason that we start even these lessons far away from each other in prayer is so that we can check in with ourselves and remember that we're part of a community. Our, during the prayer, there are moments where we will return sort of push inward and see the ways that God is speaking to us but there are also moments where we're going to push outward reminding ourselves that we are connected reminding ourselves that part of a part of our youth group and part of a church is to continue to think about other people and continue to move toward other people even when we're not always around them so just a quick reminder before we pray let's open in prayer Loving and gracious God, thank you for this day and this moment and all of the ways that we continue to gather in your word. We are grateful that you join us through common texts in the Bible, but also right now a universally common experience, even if it is a, a scary experience. God, remind us that you are present. Remind us of each of the youth group members that we see on a Sunday normally that we connect with, that we care about. Continue to nurture those relationships and bring us together. Remind us that we do need each other. In your name we pray, amen. And just as a little additional thought, I wanna offer a little bit of wisdom from Mr. Rogers. I had this nice book of sayings by Mr. Rogers that someone at a, at a previous church passed along to me just before I came to IPC. Just little nuggets of wisdom from someone who was uh, both an ordained Presbyterian minister and someone who spent a lot of time thinking about children and youth and the ways that we all get to interact with God. So here's just one little bit. It's not the honors and the prizes and the fancy outsides of life that ultimately nourish our souls. It's the knowing that we can be trusted, that we never have to fear the truth, that the bedrock of our very being is firm. 
and all the things we can and do or get to celebrate that are gonna nourish us and sustain us and move us forward. It's knowing that our very, at our very core, we can be trusted and God can be trusted. I think that's one of the, the best incentives and best reasons and motivators for me to keep reading the Bible as a source of constant truth. Um, not always truth in the most literal sense or the most understanding sense, but as a space that you can return to. A space that you trust to gather in knowing that it's safe. And so we're gonna gather in just one quick verse, knowing that as we gather in God's word, we are safe. Let's pop it open. If you have your Bible, this is Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. This is the same verse that the catechists are using today. Um, and for those of you who have been through catechesis, this may be a sort of familiar lesson. We're going to try and take just one step further with it. Matthew 13, chapter 33. I did not have it pre-marked in my Bible, so I'm just flipping through. Matthew, get in there. 13, 33. Quick verse, here it is. He told them another parable, he being Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. I'll read it again. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Quick verse. I think one of the only ways to understand a verse like this is to act it out. So let's go make some bread. So I have no idea how to make bread, but I know someone that does, Christina. She's been making bread all this time during quarantine. It's very good. So, what are some ingredients we need to get this bread going? For really basic bread, we can just use flour, yeast, salt, and water. Flour, yeast, salt, and water. That it? That's it. All right, I'll go get them. Now that you have all the ingredients, is just to combine them all, these three first and then the water. Um, so I'll start doing that. Isaac, how many loaves do you want to make? How many people do you need to feed? Let me check. Let's go check the text. Oh, wrong one. Mixed in with three measures of flour. Okay. Three measures, Dean. Do you know how many three measures it is? Like a cup? A cup? Let's check. Let's see. Three measures is uh, three measures being about 10 gallons. Oh. Whoa. Making enough bread to feed 100 to 150 people. All right. Do we have that much? <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to check.
Okay, it's covered, so now what? Now we have to wait for the dough to rise. Okay, how long is that gonna take? For this one, like 12 hours. Ooh. The bread is rising. Apparently it's gonna take 12 hours, so we'll take a break, sit down, and think a little bit about what this scripture's talking about. Cause it's most certainly talking about baking bread, but it's trying to slide in a few more meanings. I mean, this is Jesus at Jesus's most story telly and parable telly. And trying to express something about the kingdom of God in a, in a way that Jesus hopes we will, we will understand in sort of a, a deeper sense. So really the first question is to ask, what else can the kingdom of God be? If the kingdom of God is like yeast added to all of this flour so that everything is changed and everything is leavened, what else could the kingdom of God be? You know, we hear kingdom of God a lot in church. Maybe that's a phrase we've heard and we read it a lot in Matthew, but it's pretty hard to pin down exactly what the kingdom of God looks like or maybe what it feels like or when it is or how it is or all those other questions. And that's why we're coming at it through, at this moment, through bread. So ask yourself, what else could the kingdom of God look like? And I think there are many answers, but particularly for this parable, the kingdom of God is extravagant and in excess. I mean, it only takes the smallest, smallest, smallest amount of yeast to change everything and not just sort of change the bread in taste or change the bread in color. I mean, it makes the bread rise. It transforms the entirety of what it is makes it something new, entirely new. We also get the sense that the yeast is not placed in the bread by the woman, but if you get really into all the details of, of some of the translations, the yeast is hidden. And the yeast is not hidden by the woman, it's hidden by God, that a woman is kneading dough and working at what is before her, and God is hiding this kingdom this transformation, this re- intense reality of love and acceptance and, and newness in the very thing she's working on. I mean, this is something that is a great source of hope day to day, that the things we are working at have these bits of God and these intentions of God hidden throughout them. And that whether we know it or not, those are transformative and life-changing and things that we would do well to pay attention to and look out for those moments of of trans transformation yeah no the kingdom of god it's like a little bit of yeast in a whole lot of bread but everything has changed what else can the kingdom of god be like for you. Hmm. We have 12 hours to think about it. Let's see if it rose. <laughs> All right, now we need to knead it. Once it's kneaded, we have to let it rise again for another 30 minutes. All right, now the bread has risen a little bit more after 30 minutes. Um, I set the oven to 450 and I put this pot in there to heat up. I am gonna put this dough in the pot to help it keep shape. And I'm gonna put it in the oven for 45 minutes. Oven has beeped. All right, 
ready. We got a loaf of bread. I'm pretty hungry now. I'm gonna go eat some of that bread, have a good lunch. Friends, I hope that you're looking out for the kingdom of God, asking yourself, what else could the kingdom of God be? If the kingdom of God is so at work in just making bread, I think there are some other images and activities that we can turn to that may feel ordinary, but are actually super, super extraordinary. The kingdom of God's all around us. God is all around us. Let's close ourselves in prayer and then... I'll be in worship today, so if you're watching this prior to worship, I'll see you there. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for time. Thank you for mystery and thank you for story that pulls on us and calls us to remember something, to think of something that we can almost put our finger on and we want to know it more. Thank you for loving us, for calling us in front of each other and alongside you. Be with us now. Enjoy this Sunday. Bring us rest. Keep us safe. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a good Sunday. As always, we have a youth Zoom call tonight at 6 o'clock, and we have um, youth Zoom calls Wednesdays at 7.30, unless you hear otherwise. Peace.